welcome Blaine guiding you through another episode of Overkill Reviews, Banger's weekly metal review show. Hey, cool. As always, we do have a Patreon page which helps support this whole thing and we got something new in the works over there so you might wanna keep an eye on there whether you're a subscriber or not. If you like me, you can catch me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash metal comedy, watch me play games and listen to music. So now let's get to some music. It's back to the future with this one this week. You'll see, you'll, the, the joke will make sense. That's right, Nocturnus AD has released Paradox, May 24th on Profound Lore Records. Possessed, now Nocturnus, I guess something's in the water. A pioneer emerges from the woods. What, what year is this? We say 2018. And then they go, I've been lost for over 20 years. Yes, Nocturnus, originally formed in 1987, is back as Nocturnus AD. Uh, Nocturnus BC, I guess, uh, was formed in Florida. And the thing that was crazy about them is they were one of the first death metal bands to incorporate synthesizers and sci-fi themes. And then they would release The Key, which was a total underground classic. Then they'd release Thresholds. Then you'd get some, you know, kind of typical band member drama and some shenanigans. <laughs> then was a slow and inevitable death. No one pulled the plug. When it was sad to watch. But fortune has smiled. Mike Browning has assembled a whole new cast of characters to emerge the band as Nocturnus AD, which is funny because he also had the band After Death, so maybe it's like a few, too much. Can they pull up Possessed? Let's find out in the review. Off the bat, uh, this album is a sequel to The Key, and so is the cover, in a way. It's a great homage, as well as a great piece of work on its own. So, good job to Timbal Kayano. So, let's talk about the synths off the bat, in case you aren't familiar with this band, or if you are, and you wonder how they've held up. Get this out of the way, they are not big, grand orchestral keys. They're not sad boy keys. These are sci-fi synths. Uh, they have expanded the use of them. While they'll still provide spooky space intros to songs like Bandersign, there's also a crazy aggressive solo in uh, Paleolithic. It really does have like an aggressive sound, which normally keyboards uh, do not. Keyboards are normally soft. You normally take a keyboard's lunch money. This really hits you, and even if you're not super on board from the description, keep an open mind, go listen. You might find, hey, this is a time when keyboards should have been in there. And yeah, the way the keyboards work kind of really summarizes what this band is about, and that's defying expectations. Because at some point, they're also a progressive death metal band, and one of the first progressive death metal bands. Similar to keyboards, you picture softer death metal. Not the case here. What progressive means here is just being weird and crazy. There's tempo changes. Solos are coming out of nowhere and hitting you in the face. Not following a normal song structure, but there's no letting off the gas. The only thing breaking up those dizzying guitars and the drum solo is the cold, harsh reality of space. And just for one last defying of expectations, besides the record being good, great closer that's unlike everything on there. Number nine uh, is like an instrumental track that sounds like their interpretation of a rocket taking off and then assuming orbit. Totally was unexpected to close out the album. Really different than everything I had heard. Really loved it. Super awesome. Huh. If you want Florida death metal and you pick this up, that's what you're getting. It's just thinking man's Florida death metal. And I know thinking in Florida aren't normally super comfortable in a sentence together. So let's just call it Cape Canaveral death metal. Unfortunately, life is cold and uncaring, and uh, this is the first record I'm reviewing after reviewing Possessed, which is another old-school death metal band cut down in their prime, coming back to release a record that is very good. So there's going to be comparisons and some criticisms. So first up, Possessed, and this record, both of the vocals are coming straight out of a time machine. Kind of more spoken than anything, which in this case is... Beneficial, same as Possessed, because lyrically, good content on the album. But 
whereas Jeff Becerra does manage to inject a madness to his vocals, Mike's vocals are a little plainer, and because he's also a drummer, I think it kind of creeps into a little bit of an awkward territory with some of the rhythm to it. It's not all the time. Uh, on Antichamber, the chorus, you know, he puts more of a bit of a growl into it. It's a little more melodic, and it sounds good, but some of the time, uh, it's not gonna please everyone. Kind of a similar thing, I think, to like Chuck Mosley from Faith No More. And another thing that's gonna be a bit of a minor itch on a good thing is that they went very old school with production. They also took a more honest approach to recording where if they kind of flubbed a note a little bit, it's still in there um, because they tried to have complete performances, which in my heart, I fully support and I think it's great, but from the conditioning of all these modern records where they don't, yeah, it's, it's just something there where you're like, ah. And one kind of personal complaint, that track number nine, uh, number not, oh, track nine, number nine, now I get it, is awesome. Uh, but it's at the end of the record and it's like four minutes and I'm like, what, I want more of that as well in the record. This is a hard record for me to score. I can say for sure, successful comeback, nailed it. The reasons, the motivations for making this record seem to be warriors of pure metal heart wanting to create a good record, and they have done that. The thing that's causing a bit of a problem just is that, unlike Possessed, I know, I'm sorry, I just have to keep doing it, whereas people that aren't super into old school stuff will get on board, this is definitely more of a niche product. So fewer people will like it, but I do think the people that are gonna like it are gonna love it. So that's why Blaine, the reviewer, is giving it Three and a half out of five skulls that are that scene in T1 where he's cutting out his goddamn eye. So, so yes, yeah, it's, it's shoutouts shout time, time now. now. And we've just got two shoutouts this week because they're both big and deserve your attention, but one of them is gonna pull you away from the other, I think, because they're each for kind of a different type of person. Up first, we got Death Spell Omega releasing the Furnace of Pelagonesia on Norma Evangelium Diablo, Diaboli? I don't know, a lot of weird words. And on the other side, the boys are back in town. Neckbeard Death Camp, one of the funniest goddamn bands of black metal, are releasing so much for the tolerant left on prosthetic records. Let's watch them fight. <laughs>